church why don't we stand all across this house and let's lift our hands and let's close our eyes and let's thank Jesus for everything that he's done for us today God you didn't have to wake us up today but you did and we certainly are thankful Jesus we are thankful for your grace and your mercy Jesus we are thankful for your goodness God thank you for your every blessing Jesus why don't we all lift our hands everybody lift your hands your eyes and let's thank him for his goodness and his mercy we praise you tonight Jesus we adore you Lord we love you Jesus there is no one greater than you God we've come to lift up your name Jesus we've come to exalt your name Jesus
everybody thankful for life? Come on, why don't we thank him on a Tuesday night? Can anybody thank him on a Tuesday night after a long day of work? Can anybody lift their hands and say, Jesus, thank you for this life? I wouldn't want to live any other life, Jesus. I wouldn't want to live any other way, God. Thank you so much for all that you've done for me, Jesus. Oh, that's it. The Holy Ghost is filling this place. Why don't we just take about 30 seconds and clap your hands and lift your voice. He didn't have to give us life today, but he did. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We are going to go into a time of prayer in this service. Hopefully, we are praying all service, but we focus this point of the service to pray for those that are sick and to specifically pray for the needs that we have or needs that we may know of. And there is quite a bit of sickness that's going around in the church right now. So if you know somebody that's sick or if you're sick in your body, we invite you to come down to the front. The Bible says in the book of James that the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the way that we pray the prayer of faith, it says that the elders of the church will lay hands on you. So if the elders would come, this is why we have the elders of the church come, in case you were wondering. And this is why we still believe in laying hands on people, not because it's something that we came up with, but because it's one of the doctrines that God has put in his word. So if you're sick in your body, we invite you to come right now. Maybe you're not sick in your body, but you have a need. And you would like us to pray with that, pray for you, pray with you for that need. We invite you to come right now. Maybe it's not even your need. Maybe you know somebody and you say, Jesus, I want to stand in the gap for someone right now. We invite you to come down to the front right now. We believe that God is going to touch your need right now. And that God is going to move on your behalf right now. And God is going to heal you because we serve a faithful and never failing God. So Christian Growth Center as the body, why don't we pray right now? Jesus, we come before you as the body of Christ in this city. We're coming before you asking that you would touch every sick body that is in this building, every sick body that is connected to this building, Jesus. Let your healing virtue flow through them right now in the name of Jesus. Take away the sickness, God. Take away the illness that is walking through this church right now, God, and the people of this church. We ask you to heal, to touch, to deliver. Jesus, the other needs, the sickness and the brokenness and the, the frustration, the addiction, God, whatever it is, hurt, abuse, we're asking you to heal right now, Father. We're asking you to deliver right now. We're asking you to set free, Jesus. We're asking that your liberty would be in this service tonight, God. You have something you want to accomplish in this house tonight, Jesus. And so we're surrendering our will to your will right now, God. We're giving you as long as it takes tonight, Jesus. As deep or as high as you want to go tonight, Jesus. We're giving this service to you right now, God. We're saying thy kingdom come and thy will be done in this service. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Now, why don't we turn our prayer into praise? If you believe that God has hurt you, if you believe that God is working on your behalf, could you open your mouth and let's praise him together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are great, God. We've come to give you a great praise, Jesus.
on. <laughs> Is anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord on a Tuesday evening? What a sweet presence of God is in this place. We have just a couple of announcements. Please, please remember. Well, I don't know if you can remember if you didn't know, but please take note. Friday p.m. there will be a question and answer session going on right here in the sanctuary. You do not want to miss this Q&A. It is open to your questions. So there will be a normal, we will have a worship service, we'll have pre-service prayer, we'll have worship service, and then instead of the preaching portion, it will be open to questions and answers. If at all possible, please, please submit your questions beforehand, and there is a number that you can text your questions to. So if you have questions, get ready. That number is 719 719- Nine two four two four zero 
to 719-924-2402. Also, if you are in the Regeneration chat on the app, it was also posted in there, so you can make your way to that and get the phone number there as well. So we welcome your questions. We want to help you in answering those questions, if at all possible. It is going to be a wonderful time. You do not want to miss that. It will begin in the prayer room at 7 p.m., just like normal service. The only thing that's changing is instead of preaching, it will be a question and answer session. Also, this Saturday will be Daughters of Zion Prayer right here in the sanctuary at 8 a.m. So if you are a lady of Christian Growth Center, you are invited to that any and all ages. It is open to you. The ladies meet here and pray and then enjoy refreshments and fellowship. That begins at 8 a.m. Now with all the announcements out of the way, why don't you get out in the aisle? Why don't you find somebody you haven't had a chance to talk to yet? Why don't you find somebody that you may not even know too well? Let's greet each other in Jesus' name. everybody let's clap our hands and worship him as we're making our way back to our seats what an awesome God we serve amen I've got a testimony that I'm holding in reserve from last week and when it's fully accomplished I'll share that with the church but God did some great things last week, didn't he? Amen. Amen. And he's continuing to do great things this week. Amen. I believe he gave this church great and precious promises last week. And I'm excited to see them unfold going forward. Amen. Praise God. How many believe that God's favor is on our land? 
Amen. Let's read together. But the land, whither ye go to possess it, is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it, from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. Amen. Let's bring it cheerfully this evening. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? In your hands? Can you feel it? In your feet? Can you feel the fire? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want the fire? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Now your neighbor, do you want it? 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 Do you 
want it. Hey, yes, I want it. 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 Pour it out. Your fire on her. Pour it out. Revive us again. Does anybody want that riot? Does anybody got that riot? Come on, I want that riot to flow in this place. Uh, revive us again, God. Uh, restore us again, God. Uh, let the fresh wind uh, blow in this place again. Uh, come on, somebody ought to pray that right now. God send your spirit. Uh, God send your power. Send the revival. God, we need revival in our city, in our state, in our community, in our neighborhood, in our world. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, God. Amen. I feel the fire in this place. High five about five people and say, can you feel it? And you ought to respond back and say, yes, I feel it. <laughs> Why don't you clap your hands and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. If you feel that fire moving in this place... Come on, shout unto God with the voice of triumph in here. Open up your mouth and shout. Open up your mouth and shout. Open up your mouth and shout. Hallelujah! Amen. I'm going to go ahead and get to my seat. How many are ready to hear the preached word of God tonight? How many are ready to hear the preached word of the Lord tonight? Amen. God is doing great things. And I'm not going to let what I took in last week and let it die out. But we're going forward in Jesus' name. Is anybody ready for revival in this place? Amen. If you're ready for what God has for you tonight, why don't you lift up your hands and lift up your voice and ask God to speak to your heart as Bishop comes to preach the word of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Well, I am so happy to be back in the house of the Lord tonight. And I'm excited about what God is doing. And, uh, uh, I know it's a, we woke up Saturday morning and, or Sunday morning and the Middle East is on fire again. But you knew that was going to happen. That's just God's word coming to pass. People that are playing church, uh, you know, all of, the, all of the stuff that Satan would love for us to get involved with and distracted with. And Jesus is coming. And uh, I want everybody to go to heaven, but I'll tell you who's going to make it to heaven. I am. I made up my I'm going to try to get everybody else to go with me, but I'll tell you what. I'm not going to fool around. I'm going to make sure I'm ready to, to go. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, turn with me tonight to the book of Esther.
Exodus chapter 13. I really began to feel this uh, the other day when Brother uh, Townley began to prophesy and talked about families. How many of you felt that when he began to talk about families in this city? And I feel like that the Lord really has dealt with me. This may turn into a series. But it's, it's one thing to preach to people. It's another thing for people to come out of bondage and to, to embrace the right ways. We have been so programmed in America in the last few years that you don't go to church. I mean, you, do, you just go to church. Church doesn't change you. That's the new church in America. And Paul said, I tell you even weeping that not only do they not experience the cross, but they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. And so, if we're going to see God deliver not just my generation, but the generations that are coming after me. Now, when you think of that, that is my children and your children. That's these young men sitting on the front row. It's these young ladies that were up on the front row. I guess they backslid and went back to the back rows after they were done running the aisles during the music. No, I'm just giving them a hard time. Hallelujah. But uh, there has to be a new way to walk. God did not take the people of Israel out of Egypt for them to live like they had lived in Egypt before they came out. And that's what a lot of the church world is teaching. Uh, you know, all you have to do is change locations. You don't have to change gods. You don't have to change the way of life. You don't have to change your way of thinking. You don't have to change your conversation. All you have to do is just change locations and still be the same Egyptian that you were. Still be the sl same slave that you were in Egypt. Well, I don't think that's what God intends for us. I think the Lord wants us to have deliverance and victory. I, I wish there were some more people that were really enthused about that. <clears throat> and I think it starts with our families. But for our families to change, we have to change. It's easier when we're younger than it is when we get older. That's why it's so important, uh, and I've noticed this, some of us, the older we get, uh, we, we can't run as fast as we used to, and we can't shout as hard as we used to. But I tell you what, we still got to get out and show these young people how to pray, how to worship God. Now, they may be able to be more vibrant about it, but I don't think they should be more passionate about it than we are. Praise God. And some of us in this church, we've got real busy. I watch. You parents, listen to me. Don't teach your kids the Martha syndrome when it's church time. They're busy running and out, doing this, doing that. Well, I'm glad they're involved in the kingdom of God. But the first thing we teach our children is to worship Him. Period. We worship Him. That's what this service is all about. I'm so glad we have the media team and the sound team and the music. But I'm telling you, the bottom line is we worship Him. The Bible says that the Father seeketh such that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so that's where we begin and that bleeds into our life, that bleeds into our thought, that bleeds into our marriage relationships, that bleeds into how we talk to our 
spouses. That bleeds into how we are committed to our spouses. And so I want to look at that for a little bit tonight. And I want to begin in Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I'm in verse number one, I'm sorry. Now I'm actually in verse number two. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. That's why you had to bring an offering for your firstborn child. Because they belong to God. There's the first fruits. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of the, everybody say, out of the house of bondage. Look at your neighbor and said, we, we lived in a house, but it was bondage. Now, some of you didn't do that, but I will be merciful to you. I will acquiesce your refusal to cooperate. I will give in to your excuse, I'm tired. Actually, I won't. Look at your neighbor and say, out of the house of bondage. <laughs> For by strength, how did we get out of this house of bondage? Not by our might. We were helpless. We didn't have any resources to get out of this. We didn't have anybody to fight for us. We tried everything in the world. We prayed, we cried. And finally, the Lord heard our prayer. And the Lord heard our cry. And the Bible says that he led us out by the strength of the hand of the Lord. He brought you out from this house. It says place, but house. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. And then we get into that. But uh, I don't want to go there tonight. I want to actually go to verse uh, uh, I think it's verse now. Let's look at verse number 11. Uh, no, it's not that. Let's go to verse number 13. And that's not really what I want. 14 is what I want, but I want to keep it in context, okay? How many of you are following along with me? I noticed all your eyes are up here, so they must have it up here. And every firstling of an ass, somebody made a, uh, made a video bite of Brother Dross the other day, and they're making a big deal out of it. Hey, there are some people, they live at donkey level. I never thought of it that way before. So, so there you go. He, he quoted the Bible. And here it is again. I just thought I'd let you know in case you want to make a sound bite for me. But I'm reading from the Bible. I, you know what? Trolls don't bother me. If people have faith in God to believe his word, they're not going to look for stuff to criticize. They're just going to do what God wants them to do. And every first lean of an ass, some of you may not know what that is, that's a donkey. Okay, or a, or a burrow. A burrow is a little ass. Okay, just thought I'd tell you that. Thou shalt, what are you doing, brother? I'm making fun of trollers, that's what I'm doing. Probably shouldn't, but it just, you know. I just love the word of God. I'm not looking for mistakes in the Bible. I'm looking for answers and I believe they're there. Thou shalt redeem with the lamb and if thou wilt not redeem it then thou shalt break his neck and all the firstborn of man among thy children shalt thou redeem. Now God won't let you break the neck of the firstborn. 
He commands you, you have to redeem them. And it shall be when thy son, now this is verse number 14, it actually is where I want to go. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in the time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him by strength of the hand of the Lord? Brought us out from, the, from Egypt, and here it is again, from the house of bondage. From the house of bondage. And now I want to go to the book of, uh, I think it's First Samuel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse number 35. 1 Samuel chapter 2. This is way on up. This is the time of Eli and his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And God says to Samuel, this is the little boy Samuel that God is talking to. And God says unto him, And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And when I find somebody that will do that which is in which is in mine heart and in my mind, God said, I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever we've come out of a house of bondage but we're not we're not supposed to wander around aimlessly for the rest of our life we're not a, we're not 12 tribes wandering in the wilderness anymore brother Mitchell we're, we have to get rid of our tribalism and our wandering around and when we get dissatisfied we just pick up and move on God said, if I find somebody that will do it according to my heart, I will build them a sure house. How many of you want God to build your family's house? How many of you want God to establish your family's name like he did Abraham and like he did David? For that to happen, brothers and sisters, we have to follow him with all of our heart. With all of our mind. What are you doing brother elder? I'm reestablishing all over again. What God wants to do. This is the vision of God. In Pueblo, Colorado. And in this area. This is what he wants to do. This is what he wants to do. With all of these street people. Wandering around in bondage. They're slaves. They're slaves to the Pharaoh of their life. To the Pharaoh of crystal meth. To the Pharaoh of. Marijuana to the Pharaoh of alcohol. God never intended for our children to emulate them. God intends for our children to be in the house that He builds for them. Oh, if you believe that, why don't you put your Bibles down and let's lift our hands and let's praise Him like He's worthy to be praised tonight. God, we love you. We praise your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Feel the Holy Ghost. God, I want you to build a house in Pueblo that is so strong that when the winds beat on it, whosoever heareth these sands of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. That's how you feel tonight. Can you just praise him? Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated.
years ago I was talking with Brother Booker and, and I will I, I tried to contact him I haven't been able to get a hold of him but uh, he told me a story about uh, Brother Paul Price Bishop Paul Price who actually last year went on to be with the Lord I believe it was last year two years ago Brother Price pastored in the city, where is this wine country in Napa Valley. Brother Price pastored in the city of Napa for many, many years and built a wonderful work there. I, for whatever reason, I preached all over California and I never preached for Brother Price. There were times that we set up. You know how it is. It just wasn't the timing of the Lord. But uh, a few years ago, Brother Booker told me that he took Joel, his son, and I believe his other two sons, Philip and uh, Larry, and they went to see Brother Price. He was in his 90s, and he wanted that influence to be in his children's life like it was in his life. Mom, I forgot to acknowledge you. I'm sorry. I'm so thrilled and honored to have my mother with us in church tonight. I will always honor her. Love her very much. But they went to see uh, Brother Price so Brother Price at that time was still very sharp in his mind. He was in his 90s. I think he lived to be 99 years old. And right up to the day he died, they told us that he was extremely sharp in his mind. <clears throat> and when they went to see him, he began to tell them how that God had blessed that city. When Brother Price went there, he had to work a job. Because there was not enough support in the church to support the ministry. There were so few people. And he was, at first, he just carried hod for masons. He was a hod carrier, which is a very hard job. That's carrying mortar for bricklayers and block layers and stone layers. And then he graduated into becoming a mason himself, was very successful, and through his work efforts, he was able to win a lot of men and families while he was working. They came to know the Lord, and they were baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. I feel like preaching tonight. And so the church grew and God blessed the church. Now if you're around Napa Valley, there's some very successful wineries, but there's also some beautiful uh, ranches and farms. And there was a particular old, I don't know if it was a winery, I have to ask Brother Booker again, but it was a beautiful location. And Brother Price would drive by this location and he would pray and say, God, this is so beneficial this is where we need to build our church so he went to the people that owned that and for years they wouldn't sell it to him and finally the old gentleman that owned it looked at brother price and said you know what reverend i tell you what he said i will sell you this property but he said you see that big old house over there it was a Old style, beautiful home. Never seen it. I want to go see it one day. Uh, I suppose I could when I'm out there in a few weeks. I'm supposed to be out there tomorrow. I'm not going to make it. Not in Napa Valley. But um, it was a nice place. And Brother Price said, yes, I see that house. And he said, that's where I was born. And he said, that's where I grew up. And he said, my dad was born there. And my dad grew up there. And he said, my grandpa came out here from somewhere. Maybe Spain. I don't know. I can't remember. 
wherever he came from. And he said he homesteaded this property. And he said he built this up into a very successful farm or winery or whatever it is that it was. And he said, this has been in my family since it's, it was homesteaded, since its inception. And he said, I will sell you this farm on one condition. And Brother Price says, what is it? And he said, I will sell you this farm if you write it in the title deed of this property that for as long as you have it or if you ever sell it, that whoever has this farm, they have to keep that house the way it is right now. They have to keep the maintenance up on it. He said, because that is the heritage of my family. And he said, that's where our heritage began here in California. And we want it to stay that way. And so Brother Price made the deal with him. And I guess if it's still the property of the church today, if you drive by there, that house is still there. And they still take care of it. And they still maintenance it because that was the intent of this man is that nothing would come between him and the establishment of his family, his family's name, that was where it originated. Now, brothers and sisters, the Bible lets us know that we are, we are the house of God. Know ye not that your body, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I believe it is. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Ye are not your own. Ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Now, we want to establish a few things here because all of us come out of a house of bondage. And so we're not used to the ways of God. But I'll tell you this, brothers and sisters, if we are going to be the children of God, we have to be established because our Father is established. I read to you when I preached to you at Passing the Torch. The Bible said it is good that the heart be established. You've got to settle down. And you've got to become who God created you to become. God really began to talk to me about this. Because where they are fighting right now. Where the war is going on. Where people are being brutally, they're not just murdered. These people are being brutally slaughtered. I read of babies that were laying in their bed. And those men came in and cut their heads off. Babies. So I don't want to hear it. I know, that's the problem. Is the news media is hiding this from the rest of the world. They're cutting Women's heads off. I read one account today where one man saved his family. And now they can't find him because in saving his family, these people that are, they are calling Palestinians, they're not even Palestinians. They are terrorists. And the media keeps putting the name Palestinians on them. And forever they have been terrorist. Forever they have been murderous. Now you think this is political, but this is spiritual. Forever they have, they have done nothing but cause terror in the hearts of people. They are wonders and rabble rousers. Before 1948, if you were to visit the land of Israel... It would have been a wasteland. I thought of this when I went to some of these places that were occupied by what the news media is calling Palestinians. 
Now, I'm sure there's good people there. I'm sure there's good mamas and kids there. But did you see the little boy sitting on it? Not one little boy. It was a little five-year-old girl sitting on her daddy's shoulders firing an M1 machine gun that she got when we neglected all of those weapons when we ran out of Afghanistan. A little five-year-old shooting it up in the air and she had a 45. I'm talking about a little girl. That's what they're teaching her is how to hate. That's what I'm trying to preach to you on Sunday morning. You think just because you won't fight, you're going to be all right. I'm going to tell you something. That the very spirit of terrorists is the spirit of Satan. The Bible says he hates you. The Bible said he was a murderer from the beginning. And he is the father of murderers. The Bible says he's a thief. He's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to annihilate you. I read today where they beheaded one guy with a hoe. They're doing this like uh, one time I went with a friend and we trapped a mountain lion in a sheep's fold. And before we got that mountain lion, that mountain lion had killed 28 sheep. But if you listen to all these little, these little people telling you, oh, that, all, the, all they do is they just, they just kill for food. Yeah, you tell that to a farmer that goes in his chicken house after a weasel has been in there. And that weasel has killed every one of those chickens just for the fun of it. It's just their nature to murder. Because they have the spirit of Satan in them. And that is the spirit of the last day. That is the spirit of the Antichrist. What's going to happen to people that don't take the mark of the beast? They're going to get their head cut off. You ought to know right now what kind of spirit. The Bible says the spirit of the Antichrist doth not. It already works in this. It's already here. And some of us are still playing church. And some of us are acting like the world's just going to go on like it's always went on. And some of us are acting like we're really saved. And our life is as full of bondage as it's ever been. But I implore you and the rest of this city, it's time to get right with God. It's time to quit playing church. It's time to make our calling and our election sure. If you would have seen that land before it was, before it originally went back to the people that God gave it to in 1948, it was desolate. There was trash everywhere. Just like there was They're called refugee camps. You know why? Because not even the Arab countries around there want them. Because they know what they are. They're murderers. They're criminals. They live for one thing. And that's to kill God's people. Man, I'm not getting a whole lot of amens right now. But you know something? I'm a prophet. I'm not a politician. And I'm trying to reach people and wake them up. So, well, at one time, Brother Elder, no. After the Turks left, it became a desolate land. You can read about it when Mark Twain went to visit. What's the name of that book he wrote back in the early 1800s? I think we have it. And Mark Twain talks about, I don't know why in the world God's people wanted this land it is desolate they lived in tents they just threw their trash all over the place they didn't do anything to settle the land and in 1948 God's people came now I went some I don't know I don't know how many years ago and my mom told me they went in how many years 40 years ago mom Forty years ago, that would be back in what? 70s? Late 70s? 78, 79? Some of you weren't even born back then. A 
And you know, she probably saw it a whole lot different than I did. They flew into Amman, Jordan, which Amman, Jordan is really only 70 years old. It's not even a biblical city. Now, the, the land of Ammon is a biblical land. But Amman is a new city. You know what it's made out of? Refugees. Whew, it's quiet. God, help me preach this the way you've shown this to me. And so God's people began to arrive there. And I never saw this till I went there. But it, I, I, I get the picture in my mind just like they arrived there when they came out of the land of bondage. And they began to build it up. What was desolation? What was trash? It's now rows and rows of banana groves. And bananas aren't even native to Israel. And it's rows and rows of vegetation. Vegetables that are edible. And rows and rows of lemon trees and vineyards and olive groves. It's against the law to cut down an olive tree in the land of Israel. And if you go into the south where they're fighting, what's the name of that city? Goliath was there. Ashkelon. That's where a lot of fighting's going on right now. Up on the high end of Ashkelon, we stood on the hill and looked down into the valley where David fought. In fact, I, have, I had some five smooth stones right from that very brook. And my little grandchildren have slung them from here to yonder. But I picked up five, well, they weren't too smooth, but they were stones. Right out of the same, it was dry. There was no water in it. And I stood on the hill where Goliath shouted his challenge to David. And you go further south, and now areas that were desert, God's people have taken water from the Red Sea, and they've desalinated it. And where once were horrible lands of desolation are beautiful, fertile wheat fields and corn fields. Because God said, if you'll do this my way, I will build you a sure house. I will build you a house that not even the enemy can, can come against you. And all of this is a... This is an analogy of what God wants to do to your life and to my life. When we come out of the bondage, the house of bondage. I look at some of you. I look at some of you that are coming out. Uh, you, as, as much as he'll, he'll talk about it, and I don't know. I'm not trying to make anybody uncomfortable. But some of you ought to sit and talk with Brother Maceo. Because it's not been an easy road, Brother Maceo, to come from that kind of world. A world of, of, of drug abuse and a world of physical abuse and a world where you just give in to your anger and you let your anger display itself any old way that you want to uh, and all of a sudden you come into the house of God and there is leadership and God says no you're not going to do that anymore and instead of writing his law on the tablets of stone like he did for Moses on Mount Sinai through the Holy Ghost and through preaching like this and through leadership, God begins to write his word uh, on your heart. Uh, and all of a sudden you have a family uh, and nobody else in your family has ever been able to have a family like this before. And you are graduating from high school and nobody in that family He's graduated from high school before and you are graduating from oh Jesus help me preach this uh, and you're graduating from college uh, and you're being used in ministry uh, and God is putting your life together and now your children are living for God and your grandbabies are living for God for God's sake uh, I'm telling you how in the world will people that 
come out of that world, look back into that world and say that it's better than the blessings and the promises of God. Bondage. Beat you up whenever they want to beat you up because they're the slave master. Sell you off into slavery. So you got to get this, young people. No, the slave master is not some dude with a whip. It's an addiction. That sells your children into a different kind of addiction. And your husband leaves because he's so in bondage to pornography that it's destroyed the marriage. And so, the women just keep having babies because that's what the slave master needs is for you to have more babies so that he has more slaves. Y'all are quiet tonight. That's the world God brought us out of. How many, I'm not going to even ask you to raise your hand. We have a small crowd here tonight. But if I were to ask you, how many of you, your lives have been affected by divorce? It would be over a huge majority of this congregation. Because outside of the church, they don't know the succession of the promise of God. That I will build you a sure house, David. And lineage after lineage after lineage will live in this house. What must it be like uh, to be an old man and have your great-grandchildren come into your house. And they're still involved in the church. uh, And they're they're successful in what God has called them to be. Because there's a man or there's a woman that decided I'm going to fight the fight. uh, And I'm coming out of this slavery. uh, And my kids are not going to be raised this way uh, and they're not going to hear these kind of words in this house and they're not going to hear this kind of music in this house and they're not going to feel these kind of evil spirits that prey on them in this house and so It never ends. It never ends. As God builds us a house, we have to build him a house. Haggai, the first chapter tells us, Haggai chapter 1, verse number 1, Brother Richard, come. I'm not going to spend a long time on this, but I am going to spend a long time on this because I want to help young men be good husbands. Second year of Darius king in the sixth month, the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord to, by Haggai the prophet. What's going on? This is during the time of the restoration of the city of Jerusalem and the house of God being rebuilt. Haggai and Zechariah are two of the main prophets that God gave to Zerubbabel and to, uh, what what was the guy that was the cupbearer? Nehemiah. Nehemiah, Zechariah, and Haggai. These are prophecies during this time. And the encouragement of these people that are coming out of bondage the second time. Why are they coming out of bondage the second time? Because there were some mom and dads that thought they were smarter than the priest and the prophets. And they were so influenced by the idolatry of the world that they begin to allow it. I love this church. I love this truth. 
I can't figure out why people have a problem with holiness. It forever blows my mind. Perhaps it's some of you that never been in the world. Well, I didn't go deep in the world, but I'll tell you, I went deep enough to realize that the night God filled me with the Holy Ghost. At that front pew, mama, on the right-hand side with Jack Carricker praying over me. That was, that was an encounter that I have never forgotten. God delivered the... He delivered me from Egypt. I don't want anything to do with the world that he delivered me from. Do we fight? Oh, we all fight. That's why we fight. But here's the scary thing about Babylonian bondage. The difference between Egyptian bondage and Babylonian bondage is you're still a slave in Babylon. You're the same kind of slave that you were in Egypt. They're still selling your daughters and your sons. They're still breaking up your marriages. But you think you're still in the church. You're smoking your dope and talking in tongues at the same time. Singing in the choir and loving the world. That's Babylon bondage. But there's deliverance from that too, my brother and my sister. But it's the same message. You got to come out. You got to come out from among them. Who I think we're singing about revival. Let me tell you how to have revival. Come out from among them and be you separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you unto myself. And he said, I will be your God. And you shall be my sons. There it is. My, I'm going to let you back in the house. Hey, prodigal, what do you think of the house at the far country? I can't see one time when the stranger in the far country let him in his house. He only let him in his hog pen. And all of you that are looking for the esteem of the world and the status of the world and, and all of the stuff that Satan has bribed you with and tempted you with, the best you're going to get out there is a hog pen. I just pray before you get there that the spirit of your father get a hold of you and you'll say, my God, even the servants in my father's house Jesus said in my father's house are many mansions. I'm preparing a place for you. So, one of the keys, this is one of the most important keys. If you ever get this, you are on the road to victory. This is the biggest battle you'll fight. This is the first battle you fight when you start backsliding. And this is the first battle you win when you get saved. You realize if I am going to be saved, I have to be in Father's house. I have to protect Father's house. I'm going to be in Father's house every chance I can be in Father's house. I'm going to be in Father's house on work day. I'm going to be in Father's house on visitation I'm coming to women of Zion's prayer meeting and I'm bringing my daughters and then I will go shopping because one of the things I want my kids uh, I want my children to love father's house uh, 
Father's house is so important to my children. When I have the victory, I go to Father's house. When I am defeated, I go to Father's house. When I am encouraged, I go to Father's house. When I'm discouraged, I go to Father's house. When I just need to talk to somebody, I go to Daddy's house and I talk to him. So if I'm going to get out of this bondage, the prophet begins to prophesy. This is the second year of Darius, the king, not Darius, the song leader. He is a king's kid. Came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel. Governor of Judah to Joshua, the son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. But Haggai is saying, Yes, the time has come that the Lord's house be built. You got to get this. So, well, I, I, I feel convicted. That's when you really need to be in Father's house, it's when you're convicted. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying, Is it time for ye to dwell in your houses that have roofs over them? What he's saying is, you're spending all the time building your house. But I just preach to you that if you will do it God's way, He will build you a sure house. You're putting a roof over your head. And this house in your spirit and in your mind lies in waste. You're spending more time on social media than you are building my house. Now therefore, saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You've sown much. You're working hard, but you're not getting any return. Now, I don't have time to break all this down, but you're saying, "I, I really love my wife, and we're really trying, but there's just dissidence in our marriage. We never have time together. Maybe your priorities are messed up. Because you're listening to other voices other than your father's voice. You've sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, but you're not warm enough. That means every time you turn around, you're going to shop some more. Never satisfy. Got more shoes than you can put in your closet, boy. Jesus, help me now. I am touching the sacred cows. Got more shotguns than you know what to do with. More pistols. More knives. More hobbies. Always busy doing your... I have a friend, I love this friend to death, and he's always running off playing. Always. And we'll sit and we'll have breakfast and he'll sob like a baby because he's not doing what God called him to do. And I'm going to tell you something. You ain't ever going to be happy till you do what God... You're never going to feel fulfilled until you get out there and start building God's house. And if you'll build God's house, he said, I will build you a sure house. I'll build you a house that when the winds blow and the rain beats on that house uh, and the storm comes against it, uh, it'll stand. Uh, It will stand because you were busy building my house in your life. 
Why you did you didn't even know it? Why you were building my house? I was building your house. Uh, I was building your marriage. Uh, I was building your children. Uh, I was building your grandchildren uh, while you were building my house. I don't have time to read all this, but he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, change your ways. Change your ways. Go up the mountain and bring wood. And build the house. And God says, while you're building, I'll take pleasure. That, that means he's going to come by, brother. He's going to pat you on the back and say, son, you're doing a great job. You're doing awesome. This is so cool. This is awesome. And he said, I will be glorified, saith the Lord. And I don't have time to get in the rest of the book of Haggai, but, but it is a whole encouragement to these people that are trying to come out of slavery. They have made the 600 mile trek back from Babylon to the city of Jerusalem. And they're trying to build the walls and build the church again. Brothers and sisters, I can't tell you this. The Holy Ghost comes upon Nehemiah. Nehemiah brings back the king's checkbook. If you do what the man of God preaches, that's God's checkbook. Oh, you're doing good. Some of you are doing it, but some of you, you think, well, I, you know, it's okay to come and listen to preaching, but, but I don't have to do what the preacher's saying. No. That's God's checkbook, sister. That's God's checkbook, brother. <laughs> Nehemiah brought back the signet of the king. And when Sanballat and Tobiah, that were living in the tithe and offering compartment of the house of God shutting up the windows of heaven and the first thing Sam Ballot and Tobias experienced was Nehemiah walking in there and kicking them out some of you don't even realize it uh, you think you are doing what's right and you are stopping the blessing of God in your life Malachi chapter 3 verse number 8 will a man rob God Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? Let me preach to my Spanish brothers and sisters. Learn this. Because they don't teach this in the Catholic Church. What is tithing? That's 10% of everything that God gives you. That belongs to God. Learn it right now. Learn it. Before the devil lies to you and tells you there's another way. Watch how God will open doors. I don't see Sister Juana. There she is. I do see Sister Juana. Sometime you ought to talk to Sister Juana and hear the miracles that God has done for this incredible lady. Now she's got other of her family here. Brother David and his family are just as faithful. But it all started out with Sister Juana. In a little, well it wasn't little, it was a 40 foot country air travel trailer at Fort's Mobile Home Park on Lake Avenue on Wednesday night Sister Gina you don't even know her she's already passed on to be with the Lord translating for me and a little lady got a hold of this and God started building her a house how many brother Dobby and sister one of this family have we baptized 35, 40, 40. How many got the Holy Ghost? 35 in this family. If God will do it for her family, he'll do it for yours. But you got to do it right. It's more than that. She lived faithful, walked with God, paid her tithe and offering. They sent her home with her son, who was an American citizen. 
We didn't know what he was going to do. But you know what? They didn't realize. They sent God's child home. And the head man for immigration over this whole district. I'd tell you his name, but I love him and I'm not name dropping. But he called me personally in my office and he said, Mr. Elder, this is a travesty. He said, we are going to get Juana and and Joshua back as soon as we possibly can. He gave me a personal number to his office. He said, anytime you have problems, you call me and we will take care of these situations for you. I'd like to brag and tell you that was because of me and how important I am and how great of a preacher I am. It didn't have anything to do with me. It had everything to do with a little child of God, a little daughter of God that said, I'm going to build God a house. I'm going to build him a sure house. I'm going to build him a big house. I'm going to do it God's way. Start now. Make it a part of your life. Tithe. Offering. So well, this preacher wants you. This, this preacher was living wonderfully long before your money ever got involved. This has nothing to do with your money. This has everything to do with God blessing you. This has everything to do with God building you a sure house. Because he wants to. The Bible says, you're cursed. But the good thing is that God will remove that curse. How will he remove that curse? Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. What is the storehouse? It's the house of God. That's why we bring our tithing into the house of God. What is tithing? It's 10%. If you make a dollar, a dime of that belongs to God. If you make $100, $10 of that belongs to God. If you make $1,000, $100 belongs to God. If you make a million dollars, $100,000 belongs to God. Why do you say that, brother? Because I saw some people that when they were making 10 bucks an hour, they were faithful, and then God blessed them abundantly, and now all of a sudden they're too important. You know what you're doing? You're taking your family back into bondage. Let's build this house right. You know, I'm just going to I'm just going to do what the word of God says. Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house, saith the Lord, and prove me now. This only place in the Bible where I see where God said, "Prove me. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer." The devourer, the one that was in Haggai the one that kept stealing everything, God said, I'll rebuke him. I'll send him running. I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Sayeth the Lord of hosts. And all nations. That means all of your, all of your homies in Mexico. And all of your homies in Cuba. And all of your homies that said you'll never make it. They're going to scratch their head and they're looking at you and say, my God. Uh, not only are they blessed financially, but look at their children. Their children are living for God. Uh, look at their marriage. God has put their marriage back together. Look at their grandbabies. God is blessing their grandbabies. Why? Because God said, I'll build you a house if you'll take the time to build my house. I'll take the time and I'll build your house. Oh, let's stand to our feet. Everybody, let's stand. Let's give God a high praise right now. <laughs> Come on, let's praise him.
I feel such a strong anointing of God in this church. I'm preaching to some of you young men. It's your first job, and the devil wants you to get into bad habits. No prayer. No church attendance. Even found you some buddies that are trying to convince you to smoke a little dope on the side with them. Tell you something, young man, let's see where they are 10 years from now. And let's see where you are if you'll do it God's way. When they try to talk you into going somewhere, why don't you go to the Broncos game with me on Sunday? Why don't you turn right around and look at my bald eyeball and smile real big and say, why don't you go with me to Christian Growth Center on Sunday? When they tell you, why don't you go to Taylor Swift concert with me? Turn around and look at them and say, why don't you come with me on Sunday night and watch what God does? I didn't get as many people clapping their hands on that one, but... Hey, hey! prayer and there's other things things that I want to do that I can't talk about right now because it's too detailed but it'd be cool if God would give a man and we, we used to have one we had a man that created a boy scout system that was fabulous in this church he got to making so much money Satan tempted him and he walked away from his calling but you know I'm believing God will bring him back because I love him he's a brother and he does not realize that I have men that are young men today. They were boys back then that still come and talk to me and tell me how that that period of time in this church affected them to such a degree. Teaching a young man how to do simple stuff. Because a lot of our young men today coming in the church... Brother Joe, they don't even know how to tow, they don't even know how to tie a hook on a line. Now, if you can't tie a hook on a line, you're in trouble. No, I'm kidding. You don't have to tie a hook on a line. You may need to. If food keeps going up in the store, you may need to know how to tie a hook on a line. Just little stuff. How to check the oil on your car. Do you know I've had to go pick up people in this church that burnt the engine up on their car? Because they never checked the oil on the car. I'm preaching to some of you right now. Maybe we need to have that on Friday night. Question and answer. How do I check the oil on my car? If you come up here and ask me if Adam had a belly button, we're throwing you out of here. Not really. But there are, there are pertinent things that we can do. That's one of the dreams that I have. I don't see Brother Dimitri here to, or, yeah, Brother Dimitri here tonight. Maybe he's out ushering. But I'll tell you this. That's one of the dreams I have for the Donna Cordova Center. It's finding ways. To teach a generation how to be God's men. Teach a generation how to be God's women. Teach young ladies, you don't have to give your body to every guy that tells you you're cute. For God's sake. How do we do this, God? How do we get some respect in these young ladies? So they're not carrying three babies on their hips by the time they're 18 years old. And I'll tell you this, some of you single mothers that you've been through this, don't let the devil shame you into keeping your mouth shut. God has given you victory. Talk to these young ladies. Tell them you don't want to go down that road. Tell them God will help you. Come on, some of us, 
The devil has silenced our testimony. I'm praying that God will give you enough healing. You can step to the forefront and say, look, I went through that. And I'm going to tell you something, sis. You don't want to go through that. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you'll be faithful, God will give you a man that loves him with all of your, his heart. And he'll love you like he loves God. Be patient and wait on the Lord. Let's lift our hands and let's worship him. If you want God to build you a house, would you lift your hands and talk to him and ask him to build your house for you? Build our house for us, oh God. Build our house for us, oh God. Build this house here in Pueblo. Build Christian Grove Center, oh God. Let this altar be a place of deliverance, oh God. Let these altars be a place where people find freedom. Let these altars be a place where revelation comes into their lives. I know we got a little party here in a minute, but, but maybe you want to just take a few minutes before we leave out of here. Why don't you come and ask God to build your house for you? Ask God to build your house for you. Build a sure house, God. I want the same promise that you gave to David. life of mine, God. Build it down to bedrock. The bedrock of truth. The bedrock of there's only one God and his name is Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The bedrock, there's only one way to be baptized and that's in the name of Jesus. The bedrock that I've been filled with the Holy Ghost, the greatest gift ever given to humanity. I don't want a desolate and wasteland for a life. Picking up and moving here, picking up and moving there. Every time I get disgruntled,
Come on, men, let's let it start in our life. Let's quit letting the ladies of this church be the spiritual leaders of this, of our home. Come on, brothers. Let's be the spiritual leaders. Let's be the ones that put the roots down. I believe these sisters will follow if we'll lead in the Holy Ghost. Let's all stand and let's just praise the Lord like he's worthy to be praised. Can you just let the love in your heart for your Savior, can you find a way to just show him that devotion before you leave tonight? Hallelujah. Come on. Everybody, let's just love him. Tell him how much we appreciate him. We love you. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We do have a baby shower for Sister Katrina tonight. I, I don't know. Party. I'd rather call it a party. So, uh, just might stop by and say hello and grab something to eat. Just don't bring it in the sanctuary, please. No food or drink in the sanctuary. God bless you. Love one another. You're dismissed. <laughs>